Hey everybody, welcome to VW Life. Hey Matt Jackson, good morning. It is a cold day here in the old shop here yes, at VW sir. Life. Yes sir. But uh, we're going to do a little uh, work on Ziggy this morning. Right, we're going to do a little modification, if you will, an upgrade. Yes, uh, the guys over at Wolfgang uh, International in Reading, CA, that's out on the west coast. Uh, they have this thing called a trans axle stabilizer. Most people call it a mid-mount. Right, and why would you want a mid-mount? Well Matt Jackson, what happens is on a bus, is a lot of pressure gets put in on this little mount right here. And when you change, have to change this in your bus, it becomes a major project. So what the mid mount does, or stabilizer, keeps this thing from shearing. This is your this is your front transmission mount on a, on a, uh, on a split bus. So that's what we're gonna work on today. All right, so we're gonna make Ziggy the bus better. Well, yes, and uh, I, for some reason, I th all the buses here on the premises have one, and I looked under Ziggy the other day and go, hey, it doesn't have a mid mount. So, so now we get to show you how, to, how it's done, and uh, let's get started. It works that way, so we're excited. So so stick with us, we're going to put in a Wolfgang International Transaxle Stabilizer today. Okay. So why are these prone to failure, Gary? So Matt Jackson, I mean, the, the, here's the end of the transaxle, right? And of course the, the motor is, hangs on the end of that. So you have nothing besides the cradle at the front that supports the motor and the transmission all the way back to the back. And this is called the nose cone. You always hear people talk about these things. Two things are gonna happen. You're gonna, this rubber's gonna shear in here and it's gonna come loose or you'll break your nose cone. So the stabilizer's gonna, we're gonna show, we're gonna show you how it mounts across here to support the back of the transaxle here I know a lot of people have come in because we, we I ran into a pretty bad batch of these uh, these transmission mounts and some people come in through and put actually drill and put a bolt through them to, to, to hold them together pretty good idea so let's look at something real quick too because you know but mostly a, a, a bus transaxle at least a split in uh, you know uh, swing axles the transmissions are the same all they do is just flip the ring gears otherwise in a bus if you put a beetle transmission you have four reverses and one first so it's just I've heard that happening before but another difference, the other main difference is that we have are these what we call the nose cones. And this is what the, the transmission mount hooks to at the front. And you can see a little bit of the difference here on a bus from an angle standpoint. First thing you can always check is you can just look at your part number. If it starts with a two, that's a type two, that's a bus part, right? So you're not gonna put a type that, that on a on a beetle. So that's one thing you can have. But you can also, if you look at the difference between these nose, these nose cones, look at the offset here on a beetle. This one starts with a one, type one. So you can see the angle here, it's more, I guess, to the top of the transaxle right here. See your distance. And then over here on a bus, look how it's a little bit lower. This is because the bus is running reduction boxes to get everything in line. That's what you're looking for on that right there. Don't try putting in a, a, a beetle nose cone on a bus, you'll have some issues, that's for sure. These are two old transmissions that are going to, our, to the transmission shop here. We just cleaned them up yesterday. So this is what actually you have to mount to your transaxle. So in your bus, you'll see here you have these short studs normally okay and so what you'll have to do is you have to like double nut these and pull these out and then uh, Wolfgang will come in and you'll go with this plate that you have to mount in and then you'll have longer bolts that go all the way through that you attach this mount plate to so this is this is what supports your your transmission right here on the, the stabilizer okay and then then, then this piece uh, will come in and uh, it's all kind of confusing, but it's going to go like this right here, I think. Yeah, I think that's the right way. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I, that's it right there. All right, so uh, if I get this right, you put this on the gearbox, and this goes on the bus, and then the two sandwich together to provide the support for all this weight that's pushing down. Yeah, and then the, and then this will go in and hold in those like, uh, I don't know, frame horns, frame rails, whatever those things are, you know, they come back, transmission cradle things. I got, I've heard them call a million different things, and this is what is, and this is like a, this is a really uh, nice composite. It's not a solid mount, you know. If you put solid mounts into something, you know, it just shakes you to death. Nothing like that was ever. But what this is going to do, uh, this is this is keeps the fulcrum action from a, from happening. It's all the stress on that nose cone and then more uh and of course you don't want to break that nose cone but you don't want to break a transmission mount in a split because it's really uh a, a, a major major issue to go in back there and change those it's a lot a lot of work so uh, i I've, I've found that uh, it's knock on wood this has not uh, I've, since i put these in my uh, jerry the bus i have not had any broken transmission mounts at all we don't go off-roading we don't beat the heck out of our buses or anything like that but we do go off-road this has been really i've been very very help, happy with this well let's sure. get under that bus and start putting in the wolfgang international mid mount let's do it matt jackson
All right, so this is everything you get with the kit. You get a nice set of instructions, the two mounting brackets, the two stabilizer mounts, and the hardware. And now we're gonna get under there. And really, this is the hardest part, is getting the nuts off the gearbox, because you've got to... Uh... <laughs> Wait, why are you laughing? <laughs> Matt Jackson, this is a family program. We don't need to go around saying, get your nuts off, okay? are usually pretty dirty in this case it's not real bad but we're gonna give it a quick cleaning you might have quite a bit of gunk on your gearbox one double nut loose okay so what's the process here Gary well these are if you remember earlier we showed you these are those studs you got to remove these studs and uh, so it's to put your bracket on to the transmission so uh, clean everything really good and, and then uh, you put on these little uh, eight millimeter nuts. You put the original one on, they put another one on, and you snuggle up against each other, and then uh, if they're really tight. It's, it's Matt Jackson refers to double nutting. Then you uh, get them really snug, and then it'll just uh, basically acts like the head of a bolt, and you just uh, back out the, uh, the the stud because we're going to replace these studs with longer bolts for for this purpose. And here's the stud. Ta -da. We have to take uh, four of those out, I believe. Yes, sir. And then we'll be uh, putting on the uh, bracket. Yep. Okay, so again, on this step, if it's in the bus, just take your time, get those two nuts together really, really tight. Yeah, you. that's a good point, Mike Tyson. You gotta really snug them up tight. No doubt, this, this double nut process to get the studs out is the longest is the hardest part of this. If you know you're going uh, to put a transmission in a bus, put your put your new, just take these out before you put your transmission in. It's easier than doing it on your back. And uh, that's what she said. But don't put the mount on because then you, could, you couldn't get it in here. So don't put the mount on, then put the transaxle. Ask me how I know. Oh, Matt Jackson. What would life be without silver paste? You know, at this time of the year, I like to sing that famous song. Silver paste, silver paste, it's Volkswagen time in the city. See them smile when they get it on their clothes. You seem to know what you're doing, so we're not going to consult the instructions on this install. You know what you're doing. Is this your fourth one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Matt Jackson. I have done quite a few of these. Here at TJK HQ, we have a slight problem. People come up, do you flip Volkswagen? No, I just can work on my own. I tell you, it's terrible. All right, well, we've got the plate in and uh, we're putting on the stud, the new bolts, aren't we? Yes, sir. Hey, if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and caress that like button right now. Oh God, Matt Jackson. Assess and caress. Did you ever watch uh, Jay Leno's Garage? Yeah. I love Jay Leno's Garage. But our favorite part is when Donald Osborne comes in. He's the expert on, uh, appra he's an official appraisal. The dude that wears the bow tie? Yeah. And he always does it. It's time for Donald Osborne, assess and caress. If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. He's hilarious. And Jay always kind of makes fun of him. But God knows cars. I like, this is my favorite part of the, these are so custom and awesome, and they're rubber. So these go in, into these frame horns. Yep. And there's those little, and there's happened to be some holes in there. Who knows yeah. what those holes are for. So you see how that is now, that's gonna be bolted at the top, and the next bracket is gonna connect this to the bracket that we just installed on the transaxle. Mm. Do we have 14 on a yes, ratchet? Right here. Oh. Good one, Matt Jackson. So there's not really much to this. This is not installing a, this is not rebuilding a carburetor, is it? It's, no, it's just brute change. Brute support. I think the hardest thing is just, you know, you're on your back. 
And of course, you don't ever want to snug up. You snug up the, the, the your main guy, your transmission cradle. Snug that one up. But the others, put everything loose so it fits, and then you can get everything put in there. And then you can start snugging it up. This is an easy one. Look at that one. 360 degrees, baby. If only everything we did was this easy. Look at that. Hey Gary, this seems like a really nice, solid uh, upgrade to, to Ziggy. And, and the guys that developed this, I think a lot of it they were inspired by the Shasta Snow Trip. Those guys take their buses oh, with yeah. some crazy stuff. Necessity is the mother of invention. Yes, that. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, little things like this come out to help when, when you run into issues. Yep. I didn't want a heart. Yeah. No, the. Yeah, he wanted. No, he wanted courage. No, the tin man needed a heart. The lion needed courage. You, oh, you I, need a heart. I do need a Look at that, Matt Jackson. I've become the tin man. Oh, we're off to see the wizard. The wonderful wizard of Oz. All right, Matt Jackson. Mid-mount done. Yes, pretty easy little install. We wanted to just share with you guys, if you were thinking about uh, getting one for your bus, we'll leave a link below where you can grab one. Yeah, I thank the guys at Wolfgang's putting it together. Um, uh, they ran a, uh, a, a what that, uh, what's that sale that happens after Thanksgiving? Uh, Black Friday. Black Friday sale, so I picked one up for Ziggy on that, so thank them for that. Yeah. Uh, the guys at Wolfgang, uh, also, man, uh, the place to get Safari windows. Yes. We'll do a Safari window install one of these days, too. That got, sounds great. We got to do one in Johnson, so uh, thank those guys for uh, engineering this stuff and making it available to the community. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I mean, it's so simple. Yep, it's a quick little thing that you could do to just to help improve your bus. It does improve it, and, and man, I'll tell you what, change a couple of those front uh, transmission mounts and you'll be wanting to put one of these in because it's a lot easier to put this in than to change one of those mounts, believe me. We need delivery, speed delivery to you. There you go. <laughs> Matt Jackson, VW Life's getting mail now. Yes, sir. This is from, uh, Todd Baratini over in PKU MS. That would be Mississippi. Okay. M I S S I S S I P P I. Well, what do you send us? What do you send us? So let's see. This is uh, addressed to us from a VW Life World HQ. And Todd writes Hey, my bulb donation for the VW emergency kits. Hope these survive the ride over. Regards. Thanks. And look what uh, Todd did. So Todd bought. Hey! Todd, Todd got a VW uh, on the road again kit. And um, he, and of course, it comes with bulbs. And he goes, "Hey, man, I'm all LED." So he he told me he sent us a bunch of bulbs. Nice. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Because I mean, those amber bulbs are great for the front of a bus. Mm -hmm. You know, when you your fried eggs for a bus, I always like putting the amber bulbs in that. Yep. If you have an orange turn signal, it makes it a little more orangier. Thanks, Todd. Todd, awesome, buddy. Also, another shout out to uh, Julius McLinko. I think I'm saying Julius is right. He has a '63 Beetle. It's beautiful. And Julius, thank you uh, for buying an On The Road Again kit. And send some more pictures of your Beetle. We'll get them posted up on VW Life, man. You guys, just keep going what you're doing. Stay out there, send us some, uh, send us pictures and keep the comments going. Speedy delivery to you. See you around the neighborhood. Bye-bye. Bye, Mr. McBride. All right. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody.